So a few weeks ago, a YouTuber had posted a, his review of these new reproduction Game Boy Micro housing uh, units that are available on like AliExpress and eBay, and you know, I didn't really like his review, and I figured, well, hell, I can probably do it better, so here we go. I got my micro here. I ordered and received one of these uh, one of these shells, and you know it comes with just that standard red chrome faceplate. But don't care about that. I already got my own. Now this isn't an original Famicom unit. You can probably tell if you look close at the corners there that it's just a sticker over a faceplate, and this is just a regular run-of-the-mill black. Uh, US domestic market Game Boy Micro. Works just fine, no issues with it there. Uh, but I am going to be taking it apart for the sake of testing out this new shell here. Uh, like that other video had had mentioned, I mean the shell itself it, it feels fine. There's nothing particularly outstanding about it. Um, I mean it it is what it is. Uh, it's made from the same material. It's this this anodized aluminum. The text on it is... I mean, you know, it's actually pretty good compared to some of the other ones I've seen. Um, of course, it doesn't match my micro because my micro is a US unit and the text on this one is based off of the, uh, the Japanese domestic market version. Or actually, hang on one sec, I'll be right back. So I forgot I had this as well, another micro. This one's a Japanese unit, but this way we can compare the text side by side. The serial number format is the same. Of course, it's got a different serial number because this is kind of like printed on here. Um, but you know, it's at a glance, it's very convincing. You can see the font on the Game Boy logo itself is different, and the font in the Nintendo logo is different. Uh, but the rest of that looks, I don't know, looks pretty, pretty good. I don't know, I'll take some, some close-up photos so we can have a better comparison later. Anyway, I'm not going to be taking this one apart. I've already taken this one apart and cleaned it, so I figure... Well, I guess it's time to clean this one and I can swap the shell and play with it while we're at it. So give me just a moment and I'll go ahead and get started on that. All right, so I'm back. I just had to go grab some tools real quick. Uh, I don't actually have the tool to remove the faceplate proper. So what I usually do, let me angle this up a little so you can see a little bit better. Uh, see, these two holes right here are the release pins. I like to kind of jam my fingernail in there to put a little bit of pressure on the faceplate. You can see it's kind of curving up there by the start and select. Uh, but once once you've got your fingernail jammed in there, I'll take like a, a sharp pokey thing, sometimes a paper clip, sometimes this bit, wherever I, whatever, you know, just jam that in there. You hear one click and the second one didn't click, didn't quite release. Give a little bit more pressure. There it goes. And that's it. Now you do have to be careful because these little plastic clips in here, on some units they are extraordinarily brittle and if you just look at them funny, they'll crack and you'll ruin your micro and you'll have to hold your faceplate down with like double-sided tape in the periphery. But anyway, um, the Game Boy Micro is actually held together predominantly with uh, tri-wing screws and a lot of people think, oh you need a special screwdriver. No, not really. This is what I use. This comes with most of those reproduction shells. It's just regular standard screwdriver, red handle uh, with the black alloy shaft there. This works great. 
There's another screwdriver that is packaged with a lot of reproduction shells. This one's also got the red resin handle. You can see it's kind of shaped a little bit different. Uh, it's more round. There's some funky patterns going on here. And it's got this chrome alloy handle. These things are trash. Throw these out when you get them. We don't want to use that. This one, however, this one's going to work great. So bear with me. It's been a while since I've taken one of these apart, so I'm probably going to go slow. But first thing is I'm going to undo this Phillips screw here for the battery compartment and take the battery out. And I'm going to try and do everything on camera, but me being the bumblefuck that I am, I'll probably go out of frame several times, but well deal with it I guess all right so there's these two screws on the top near the charge port try not to uh, lose them these two screws on the side for the uh, by the volume rocker can't remember if we need to take these ones out yet or not so I'm just gonna go ahead and take out these two big tri wings in the middle here the other four screws in here are Phillips and I don't think we need to take those out yet but uh, find out in just a second alright so that came out pretty easy next we need to I mean, I suppose if you just want to swap off the back, that's pretty easy. Pop those in there, or pop those out of there, rather. And put this together. I mean, it fits together nicely. I'll give you that. Okay, anyway, done with that. Alright, so now back to my Phillips screwdriver here. There's one. Oh. I guess technically these are JIS screws, not Phillips. So if you're gonna use a Phillips screwdriver anyway, go slow and be careful. Or actually, I don't even know if these are JS. Okay. I got the two by the shoulder buttons, and then this one down here by the power switch. And that should release this frame for the shoulder buttons. Actually, I don't even think we need to do that. So I'm gonna put those back in. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done. Oh wait, no, yeah, we did need to take those out. Just kidding. I was testing you, you all passed, congratulations. I don't know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Maybe we didn't, whatever. Uh, Alright, so that's pretty much as far as you need to take it apart. I'm going to pause the video now uh, just because I want to go in there and clean the buttons. This thing's never been taken apart to my knowledge. The buttons aren't quite as responsive as I'd like them to be. Uh, I will go ahead and film that just in case people are curious about what I'm going to do. But um, I'm, you know, this is going to be linear for me and it's going to be out of order when I put everything in the video. So. I don't know, just bear with me. Hang on. Alright, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and keep taking this apart, even though I don't need to. 
uh, just because I want to go ahead and get in there and really clean the buttons pretty much just because I already have it apart. Uh, so at this point there are three more Phillips screws I'm going to go ahead and remove. These are for the D-pad. So when I say Phillips, just go ahead and mentally correct that to the correct screw here, which I believe again is GIS, not Phillips, but you know what I mean. And this should come off now. There's probably, yeah, looks like there's a little clip holding it in at the shoulder button. I'm going to see if I can just pop it out. He says right before he breaks it. There it goes. Doesn't look like it broke. I think we're good. I'm just going to set that aside. Uh, now, be careful. There's these little springs in the shoulder buttons. Those will fuck off on you if you're not paying attention. And one more screw on the other side of the cartridge slot. Now this shielding should come out. Yep. Throw that in the pile of parts. And this is the part where you have to be extraordinarily careful because this Game Boy is essentially, the motherboard is essentially three different circuit boards all connected up by these laminated ribbons here. If you rip one of these ribbons, you're done -zo. There's no, There's no repairing that, there's no replacing the part. You have to get a whole new micro, or at least a whole new board here. On other consoles, they're usually connected up with uh, what's called zero ZIF connectors, zero insertion force, which is how this screen connects up. So let's see if I can do this without destroying my micro. There we go. Now had I prepared for this video a little bit better I would have the right tool to do this but I'm just going to use my fingernail to flip these little connectors up, pop out the backlight connector. Oops, framing you fuck. Uh, and try and pop out else there we go yeah all right so now I'm just gonna scooch some of my parts over all right so from here I was just going to wipe off these pads with a cotton swab and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol I'm using 91% higher is better in this case but you gotta use what you got put a little bit on the cotton swab and just swab these suckers out. Now this unit is actually pretty clean. I'm only doing this because they're kind of a pain in the ass to take apart and I don't want to have to take it apart again. But looking at it now, I probably wouldn't have ever had to do this or at least wouldn't have had to do it for a very long time. Uh, but again, all I'm doing is wiping off both the copper contacts on the motherboard and the carbon pads on the little silicone um, membrane, button membrane here. And you can, I don't know if you can see that too well. I mean, it was kind of dirty. Nothing you could see just by looking at it, but after cleaning it, you can see all the junk on the, the cotton swab. And again, while I'm in here, I'm just going to pop these out, pop the buttons out, and then just clean in between the buttons because it is an absolute pain in the arse to do that with the console still assembled. But it takes like 30 seconds to go in there and clean up the D-pad once you you know, if you just got that in your hand. Uh, 
And this one's kind of gross. I mean, nothing... Nothing game-breaking. Literally. Uh, I mean, it, it worked just fine. I'm, I'm just doing this to, like I said, because I have it open. Oh, and I'm cleaning in the frame as well. Again, got to be careful. This is the delicate piece. Mine seems to be fine, but, you know, why take the chance if you don't have to, right? switch to the other side of the cotton swab. It's getting dry and gross. Okay. Again, completely unnecessary, but, you know. Okay. These membranes you can actually clean under, like, the tap, just a little bit of warm water, some soap. Uh, like dish soap or something. Make sure they're completely dry before you pop them back in, but that's that's completely fine. It's probably a little bit easier if you've already got them out. But ooh, look at all that in there. That's gross. Do do. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. Now the D-pad, one side is higher than the other. It's kind of hard to see on the video, oh, especially because I'm holding it sideways. Oh, and then I dropped it. But you can see how this side sticks up quite a bit more than that side. That's because in, uh, on an assembled Game Boy Micro, you can see the D-pad itself is kind of flat with the faceplate, but the faceplate is curved in regard to the surface of the unit. So, you know, this is a horrible angle. There we go. Yeah, so what we want to do, we want to make sure we put this back in the correct direction. I don't know what that is offhand, so I'm just going to guess and check. Okay, so that looks right. So what you want to do, let me take this out now, you want to make sure, oh, that doesn't look right, wait, oh, yeah, I had that right, I just twisted it when I removed it, okay, so the big, the tall side needs to go in towards the screen, that's it, stick that in there, stick your membrane back on, And then A and B, of course, are both keyed, so you can't mess that up unless you're really trying. Pop your membranes back in. And now, this part's a pain in the ass. Before I reconnect the screen up, I'm going to try and drop the uh, speaker back in there. And hopefully, I won't twist it over in my infinite wisdom and drop it out. All right, I'm gonna attach the big cable first, or at least I'm gonna, certainly gonna try. Okay. got that inserted and then I'm just going to use my uh... oh see I just twisted it over oh well speaker fell out alright so I just stuck my middle finger of my right hand in there and pushed the the bail down to lock in the cable 
Oh wait, the speaker didn't fall out, it was the D-pad. Hang on, let me fix that before I move on. Okay. Alright, and we also... Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Alright, whatever. I'll go in later. Alright, still need to attach... this guy here, the other part, and you know it might actually be easier to do the small one first, I have no idea. I'm gonna take my hemostat tool here, and this is not the best tool for this, it's just literally what I have in front of me, to grip the ribbon, let me try and twist this a little so you can see. and stick that in the catch. Now, I have to do something. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. Eh. Okay, let's try and release this without destroying anything. Okay. Well, so that looks like it worked, um, but that was an incredibly bad idea to use these sharp metal tool on that ribbon. Hopefully it didn't fuck anything up. Okay, let me put in the speaker again and the D-pad again. There's this little black ring around the speaker. It's hard to see. I don't know. It's kind of stuck to my speaker, but it's also kind of coming off. It looks like it's a little sticky gasket or something. You probably don't want to lose that, but if you do, you probably won't even notice. All right. In theory, it should improve the sound quality, but this thing already makes such weak sounds, and you know, it's already so quiet, so small, that I don't think it's really that noticeable. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm gonna plug this battery back in, make sure I didn't really fuck it up. All right, and I got that. And the speaker fell out because I haven't screwed it together. Hey, but it works. So, good enough for me, okay. I'm going to keep putting this back together now. You always want to make sure it works before you get too far into the process of assembling it, because then you just got to take it all apart, all again. Okay. Okay. Now I've already completely forgotten how this goes, but I got all the buttons, yeah. Shielding goes in. Oh, and it, it, it helps if you put these uh, screws in straight. <laughs> you know, try not try not to be a fuck up like I am right now. Right. Oh, that's probably why. That's not right at all. Oops. Let's take that back out. Take that out. And see why it's not sitting flush. What's up with this wire, man? I didn't even notice that before. Alright, so that's weird. I don't know, I'm just noticing that. There's this wire that goes from the, I guess it's V3 pad, VCS, I'm not sure what label that is, to, uh-oh. 
Oh, no, it's just a speaker. Now it's stuck to the metal on the back of the screen here. Magnets, how do they work? There we go. But anyway, yeah, there's that wire that goes from the V3 or VCS, I'm not sure what that is, pad to a pad right next to the CPU. I don't know. I'm going to try and bend that so it fits in a little bit better. Oh, yeah, and put the speaker back in for, like, the sixth time. Oh, the mem membrane came out. There we go. And what it, there it is. D-pad membrane came out as well. This, the, this is part of the reason why I don't do a lot of work on these things. The other part of the reason is they're rare and rarely break. The consoles themselves are rare. and Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. And the screen popped out of the housing. That's fine. Again, I'm going to use my hemostat tool to manipulate this. And it would be good to have, get yourself a good pair of electronics tweezers. Or you can just use like regular tweezers if you're, if you're the sort to have those laying around. Uh, the only difference really with electronics tweezers is they usually have ceramic tips so that you're not shorting stuff out when you're indiscriminately poking stuff that you shouldn't be. Oh, damn thing popped out again. There we go. Or maybe you like regular tweezers because you can magnetize the tip. Some people argue against magnetic tips for screwdrivers. I tell you, I don't really understand the, uh, the argument. Oh, I think that whole thing was out of frame. I'm sorry. Okay. I swear it's nothing you haven't seen me already do in this video. Okay. Except this time I made sure all the parts were lined up. More or less. Close enough. Okay. <gasps> there we go. All right, so we are back to where we started, except my buttons are cleaner and my screen is significantly dirtier. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now, take a quick break, and when I come back, I'm going to put this on. Or, more likely, I will have already put this on, because that's how videos work. And editing. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually reassemble this thing, but with the red frame instead of the original black frame. Uh, one thing worth noting between the difference between these two just in my hands, the red frame doesn't have this little black gasket that the original one does. I'm guessing this was originally there to seal out dust from, you know, to like couple with the faceplate and keep dust from getting all over your screen. Mine has long since been destroyed anyway. You can see up in this corner, it's pretty much non existent. But, you know, on the top and on this side, it's fine and then it gets kind of ratty down here but anyway red one doesn't come with that at all so just 
buyer beware, I guess. But this is going to snap on here. But first, you got to put your uh, start and select buttons back in. Those probably fell out while you were fucking about with your micro. I saw another thing on eBay that actually seemed pretty cool. Oh, you know, it's a lot easier if you put the middle part, the part that goes toward the middle in first, and then the other side just drops in. Um, anyway, as I was saying, I saw these things on eBay. looked really cool. I actually kind of wanted to pick them up. Uh, but what it is is a user was selling some uh, resin cast buttons. Basically, they took their micro apart, took some button, uh, made a mold of their buttons, and then just cast new buttons out of whatever the hell resin they were feeling at the time. And you know what? They actually look really cool. Nothing, they weren't, they didn't have anything that I think would look good with this red. I personally think the black is the best match for this, so I didn't vouch for those okay and oh that goes in later but this the power switch needs to be installed there's this little nubbin that sticks up and this little springy bit the springy bit goes towards the front of the unit or in this case the bottom because that's how i'm holding it probably should Actually, I'm going to take these shoulder buttons out again because this needs to go in first. And I'm going to just slide it out and just start over. Okay. So you can see how this little round bit fits into these divots in here, and that's what provides the, the click, the snap action, turning it on and off. Okay. Put these buttons back in. Put this back on. There we go. Next, oh, I see. Okay, sorry. So we're going to have to get this frame on, but that can wait a minute because first I'm going to put in my tri-wing one of these big screws. I'm going to do the bottom one just to kind of hold it together while I'm, while I'm manipulating it. That way it doesn't fall out and I start losing buttons again. Make sure you don't get these cross-threaded. Since this is a new shell, it's it's not just going to slip right in there, but it should still thread in. Okay, shoulder buttons. Can't really put these in backwards either because the uh, there's this little knob on the bottom that actually presses the physical button on the motherboard. That's only on one side, so if you flip that around, that'll be on the top instead of on the bottom. Whoa! Maybe I should clean this while I have it apart. That's crazy. That almost looks like battery corrosion. This thing doesn't use alkaline batteries, so I don't know. Okay, good enough. How's the other one look? That's fine. Okay. So next, we need this plastic frame here that I just have so handy off-screen framing. Fuck. Okay. Goes like that. There's a little clip on this shoulder button that holds it in. 
I'm guessing there's one on the same because that on this side too because that just snapped in. I'm gonna give that a quick wipe down. And this is at this point this is just a dry cotton swab. Okay. Now if you're like reshelling your unit and you have like uh, like one of the pink micros, this frame is probably colored. You'll want to paint this part and this part right here. Otherwise, it's going to show through when you finish reshelling. And right up here by the uh, EXT port, the charge port here, you want to paint that. And right there and right there because that'll show through. You can see if I stick that on there. There's that part right there and that part right there. And then when that comes together, this part up here. But one step at a time. Okay. Next, I believe I need to do these three screws. I think there was one right here. One in the other shoulder. And, oh, this one down here, okay. Oh, so something I'm just noticing now that I'm putting this together there's these two spots on mine that didn't get the red color I don't know what's up with that and sort of see it and unfortunately that is going to show through so I don't know what's up with that but okay uh, next I believe we just need to put the frame on but first I need to remove this screw that I put in And the reason I put this screw in is because that just threads through the frame there. It's not going to poke through anything. Okay. That should fit together. Why are you not fitting? Oh! It does fit, but I forgot something. I gotta put the volume rocker back in. So, take that apart. The volume rocker was supposed to go in before this frame here, but I think we're going to be okay. So I can let the, the face plate, the metal front, I'm going to let that droop down a little bit. And there we go. Alright. This back on. I don't know, it's not, it's not going together quite the way I want. I think it'll be fine once I get all the screws in, but it's just getting to that point. Oh, it's not magnetic. Probably is.
Okay. So I guess it was just that. It's just me and it's just that screw. Like I said earlier, this is a brand new shell. And while it does have threaded screw holes, there's also paint or whatever. I don't even think these were anodized. I think that's just paint. But either way, these don't thread in smoothly. Or at least it's not for me. If this were anything else, I'm pretty sure I would have just cross-threaded that. Or I'm pretty sure I did just cross-thread that. Sorry, I just whacked the camera. Again, it feels like I just cross-threaded that. Probably did. Okay. noises this thing is making. I hope I'm not just destroying that internal frame right now. Alright, I think that's in. Two more. Fuck off, dude. Really? Try that again. Let's try the other one. too tight. Don't want to crack that frame. I just think that hole's not lined up properly. It's going in now, but I shouldn't have had to thread it all the way. It should have slid down and I should have went in. Alright, let's, wherever I put the battery, pop that back in, test it out, there it is. It's like, how can you lose it? It didn't go far. I didn't go far, rather. 
that. So I'm gonna put the black battery cover on for now because this screw here is held in with a little captive C-clip. Whoops. This screw here is a captive screw. I'm gonna have a hard time removing that. I'm definitely not gonna be able to remove it on camera. I'm just not gonna deal with it right now. went in nicely. Oh, let's double check it in the bucket. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Let me... Ah, eh, screw it. I'll clean it later. Let's pop my faceplate back on. Pop a game in there just so we have some. So yeah, my micro obviously still works. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. You can hear the volume wherever the microphone is. And, um, you know what? Doesn't look bad. I think, I mean, I'm gonna play with this for a few weeks and report back and uh, we'll go from there. But, you know, I, if you're just looking to mix up the color on your micro, I'd paint it, man. It's not worth the hassle of getting one of these things and installing it uh, but I mean if your micro is in like super bad shape like my other one I got used to have a big old dent I tried popping that out but I mean these things do get damaged so I guess if your micro is in tremendously bad shape it's otherwise pretty much unusable I mean you've been using it every day for the past 10 years or however the hell long these things have been out and it's just you know it looks like hell then you know it's definitely it's definitely an option I'd say compared to other Game Boys and like I've I play with a lot of reproduction shells this is mostly a pocket but that's for a different video um, I've got reproduction shells on my SP uh, this one's original except for this top panel and this thing is entirely reproduction, it's just a replica, but as far as reproduction Nintendo shells, this is probably the highest quality feeling one, and that should say something there. My big issue is that it really doesn't go together that well. I mean, I guess if you had a really small tap, you could just clean those threads out and it'll probably go together a lot better all that cracking and creaking as I was putting it together that makes me super nervous I hope I don't take this apart and find everything is all fucked up on the inside there's also a little fit and finish issues where it doesn't quite I guess it's easier to see in person than it is in real life but on the side of the headphone port come on you can focus there we go. On the side, yeah, you can see it's kind of sticking up there, and then there's a big gap on the other side. Like, it just, it doesn't seem to line up right. Um, there's this big gap here that closes right here, and then it opens up again. And to be clear, I'm not referring to the head, or the volume rock, I'll get to that in a second. I'm talking about right in here, and then right here. And then the finish of the material, you know, you can see it's kind of chipping there. The volume rocker opening itself is entirely too large, but yeah, I mean, compare it with an original micro and it's, it's night and day there. Um, 
these panels like they don't I don't quite quite line up I mean it's not bad but it looks like this one is kind of like angled down and then this one is like straight on uh, near the top this plastic part sticks out rather significantly like it's like get caught on things and maybe chip and break significantly whereas it's perfectly flush on the original one uh, of course I'm not really looking at the battery cover right now you know what let's I'm not gonna screw it down but I will put it on at least make sure that it fits right all right so it does it actually fits a lot better than this one which is I guess it's to be expected because this doesn't really belong to this shell that belongs to the original one uh, but it does actually fit in there quite flush I imagine you screw it down it'll be nice and sturdy the uh, opening for the power switch there it actually looks pretty nice especially when you put it side by side with a, an original unit there um, yeah I mean it is what it is. Oh, and of course, y you gotta get a good faceplate. I mean, the quality of the faceplate is, is the biggest deal. The chrome ones, in my experience, are actually pretty nice. I personally don't like this red on red look, but that's just me. I like this Famicom gold on red, because I guess that's what this shell is taken after anyway. But you know what? I like it. It's not bad. For 30 bucks USD, if you're reshelling a perfectly good micro, that's a hard pass though. Oh, and just one more thing I want to mention before I go. Oops, threw shit across the screen. The original battery cover has this little foam strip on it. The uh, reproduction one does not. So when you got this all put together and screwed down, you know, kind of rattling around, it's kind of annoying. Um, I don't know, throw a bit of folded up paper in there or something, or if you actually have some foam, you could stick it in there. But yeah, draw your own conclusions. Think what you will.